this morning. I'm really sorry I don't get to see you in person today, and I'm really glad that we have the opportunity to be face-to-face -face, even though we can't be together today. So just a reminder for parents that at 10 o'clock, that's a new time, 10 o'clock every Sunday morning, I am here at the church in person doing a children's message, and it's going to be the same message that I do here online. So if you're not ready to come back to church quite yet, but you decide next week or the week after to come back, your kids are going to be right on track if you stay in tune with my lessons online. We'll be picking up right from there every week. So this week we're actually starting our school year curriculum, which is called Crazed. So we're going to learn all about crazy stories from the Bible all year long. And every year we learn from the very beginning of the Bible all the way to the very end of the Bible. And so today's our first lesson, so we're going to be in the very beginning of the Bible. Today we are in Genesis chapter 1. Go get your Bible and meet me in Genesis chapter 1. We have our Bibles open to Genesis chapter 1. Hang on right there because we're also doing something else that's new this year. Instead of memorizing the Lord's Prayer because I know you've got that memorized now, we're starting something new. This is called the Beatitudes. Everybody say Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And actually, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is what Pastor Chet has been teaching the grown-ups about for several weeks now. And today is his last sermon, Pastor Chet's last sermon, about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. The big lesson that he preached to lots of people outdoors, just like we've been doing at church during our first service. So we're going to say the Beatitudes together, and they're going to be here on your screen for you because you haven't memorized it yet. We're just going to do the first three verses. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Work on memorizing those first three of the Beatitudes this week, and we're going to pick it up next week and learn even more. Well, boys and girls, we're in Genesis chapter 1 today, and I'm really excited to share with you about the very, very beginning of time. See, the thing is that before time began, before anything was created, God was there. And that's because God wasn't created by anything. He's not a creation. He is the creator. So he is the one that creates. So he couldn't be created. He is the creator. That's kind of something that our brains, our human brains, have a little bit of trouble understanding. So if you turn to your parents right now and say, how is that possible? They're going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> because we can't completely understand that. But the thing is that God is the creator. Nobody created God. God was there in the beginning. And you know what that means? That means Jesus, because Jesus is God, Jesus was there in the beginning. Isn't that cool? And Jesus, God, wanted us. He wanted to, to, to create us. The first thing that Jesus did, the first thing that God did, is he spoke and there was light. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Now you're going to see a little piece 
of different things from other days that he created. But right here, he spoke and there was light. That was day one. And God, I keep saying Jesus, but we know that Jesus and God are the same. It's just that usually when we talk about creation, we say God, like God the Father, because he created us. So God um, looked at the light and he saw that it was good. And that was day one. Well, on day two, God separated the waters is the way it says it. Now, wait just a second before I get to the next thing. I totally forgot because today I am going to be making a snack, a special snack for our kids who are here in person with me. And I wonder if you can make a guess. So every day of creation, we're going to add something and we're going to mix up like a trail mix kind of snack. And I wonder if maybe this is something that you can do with your family throughout the week. Or you know what? If there's no reason why you're staying home today, then turn this off and come on over to church and we can do it together. But here we go. So day one, the light and the dark. Hmm, can you think of anything that maybe is light and dark that you could eat as a snack? This is what I chose. Mini Oreos. I'm really excited about these. So this is what I chose for our creation snack to go with day one when God separated the light from the darkness to God created light. All right, then day two. On day two, the Bible says God separated the waters. And that means that he made water on land and water, of course there wasn't land, but water on earth and water in the sky. Can you think of what the water in the sky might be? The clouds, right? So he made water on the ground and he made water up in the sky. He made the clouds and the lakes and the oceans and all of that. Isn't that cool? So it was water and light and that's all there was. And God looked and he said, that is good. And that was day two. Can you think of something that might remind you of water or clouds that could go in trail mix? This is what I chose, mini marshmallows to go with our Oreos. Okay, now we're on day three. Day one, day two, now we're on day three. Let me make sure that I get the right one here. All right, on day three, God moved the water aside, the water that was on earth. He moved it aside and he made land grow there. And then he made the land produce all kinds of vegetation. So that means like trees and plants. This would be the day that he made apples and broccoli and carrots <laughs> and pears and flowers and rocks. He made the land on that day too. And he looked and he saw that it was good. Are you seeing a theme here? He saw that the light was good. He saw that the clouds and the water were good. And now he's seeing that the plants and the land were good. Can you think of anything you might put in trail mix for plants and land? I bet you came up with something better than I did. This one was difficult for me. So I chose pretzel sticks because I thought maybe they look like trunks of trees or maybe like almost like land. I don't know. So that's what I went with. Plus we need something salty in our snack today too. All right, here we go. Day one, day two, and day three. And at the end of each day, God said that it was good. All right, here we go. On day, we're on day four. Here it is, I just found it. It was hard to find. On day four, God looked back up at the sky. And because he was doing stuff on land here. And then he looked back up at the sky and in the universe. And he put the stars and the moon and the sun in the sky. So it's a little bit confusing because on day one he created light, but there wasn't a sun yet until day four. Oops, I'm trying to make this balance. Until day four. So God created like the planets and the stars and the sun and the moon on day four. And God looked and he said, that is good. All right, what would you do for this one. This was a tricky one for me. 
This is what I chose. Now I know they're for babies. I am aware of this, but we're going to try these today. See they're shaped like stars? These are strawberry apple puffs. We'll see how they taste. I've never actually tasted them before. I've given them to my kids when they were babies, but I've never tasted them before myself. <laughs> All right, day one, it was good. Day two, it was good. Day three, it was good. Day four, it was good. And then it was day five. Now on day five, God looked in the sky and he looked in the water and he said, you know what? I want to make animals to go in the sky and in the water. And so he made fish and birds on that day. Anything that that lived in the sky or in the water. So all the birds and all the fish. And you can see there's a little clue about what he's going to make next, but that was not on day five yet. It was just the birds. And I did a little, a little um, sea star right there too to represent the fish. So God looked at the fish and looked at the birds and God said, that is good. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. All right, what would you use for the birds and the fish? I went very simple with this one. Goldfish, because God made fish on the fifth day. All right, guys, here we go. Can't believe how well this is holding up. Here we go. Okay, day six. What do you think God made on day six? There's a little clue here. What do you think? He made animals and people. So this is when he made the animals that walk on the earth. Ooh, and when he made the people. So God made two people to start out. First he made, this is falling apart. First he made Adam, and then he made Eve. And he made Adam, this is a really cool thing. He made Adam out of the dust of the ground. And he made Eve out of one of Adam's ribs. Isn't that a cool thing? Everything else that God made, he used his words, but this time God used his hands and God made Adam and Eve. The animals were not made in that special way. The birds were not made in that special way. The trees were not made in that special way. Only the people. Okay, did I fix it? Mm, no, I did not. Okay. Ah! <laughs> this is going to drive me crazy. Okay, so day one, God created light, and he said it was good. Day two, God created the waters in the sky and, in the, and on the earth, and God said that it was good. On day three, God created the land and the plants, and he said that it was good. On day four, God created the sun and moon and stars, and he said that it was good good. On day five, God created the fish and the um, sea stars and, and the and the pfft, birds. Thank you. <laughs> and God said that it was good. And on day six, God created the animals that walk on the ground, like the pigs and the horses and the Alligators, I think, would have been on day six, or maybe day five. No, I think they're day six because they walk on the ground. Huh, what do you think? Where would alligators go? Not sure. Um, and, and then the people, and God made the people in a special way. Well, then, God had created everything he wanted to create. And when he was done creating Adam and Eve, he said, this is very good. Everything else he said was good, but Adam and Eve, once he got done creating them, he said, this is very good. And there was one day left in the week, and God was done doing his creation. He had finished his work, and so on day seven, God rested. All God ever wanted to do was to be close to us. And God created a perfect world where he could live close to us. Adam and Eve are going to mess that up. You know, we don't get to live in this perfect world anymore. The world's not perfect anymore. 
And we're going to learn about that next week. But this week, I want you to really think about how much God loves you, how close God wants to be to you. And every day this week, I want you to spend some time resting and reading God's word. The kids at church are going to make a paper chain. And our paper chain is going to remind us to rest and be with God. It's going to have seven chains on it. And I want you to make one at home too. Okay, get some paper, cut it into seven strips and chain them together. And then every day after you do some devotional time, after you read a Bible story or you do a devotional or you spend some good time in prayer, I want you to rip one of those chains off and see if you can rest every single day this week. You know, one really cool thing that I have learned in the past year is that God wants us to rest one hour a day, one day a week, and one week a year. That might be a special challenge for you and your parents this week. What, what, what snack would you add to our trail mix for, the, for day six, for our people and animals day? This is what I chose. I could have chosen a bunch of different things. I wonder what you picked. I chose Teddy Grahams to add to our trail mix today. Remember, there's lots of things that we get to do in person when you come to church, and I hope that as soon as your parents let you, that you will be excited to come back to church and see me on Sunday mornings. Hey, I've got a couple of really cool announcements. First of all, our verse masters this year are Sydney Belton, Emerson Belton, David Goodberry and Jonathan Goodberry. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you so much for putting God's word in your heart. Boys and girls, verse masters start again this week. Here is your new verse. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalm 139, 14. Will you read that with me? I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalm 139, 14. Boys and girls, I hope that you memorize that verse this week, and I hope that you will either come and tell me it in person or have your parents send me a video or a Marco Polo or a Facebook message of you saying your verse, okay? So that I can make sure that you get verse master credit. I want to have lots and lots of verse masters this year. Anyone in kindergarten through fifth grade can become a verse master. I will see you next week, my friends. Bye-bye.